Now at 5 a.m., this is WKYT This Morning. Kentucky is under a statewide emergency right now as crews continue to battle wildfires across the state. We'll be hearing from some people in eastern Kentucky who say it is a scary scene. We're also learning new details in a deadly Lexington crash that killed a Louisville police officer and a U.K. employee. Learn what the driver of that car admitted to police. And Richmond police officers will take a moment to honor one of their own today. How they're remembering Officer Daniel Ellis. This is WKYT This Morning. Kentucky mornings start right here on WKYT, and it's great to have you with us. WKYT. Hi, YT. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. <laughs> I'm Andrea Walker. <laughs> Kentucky girl, as you pointed out, right? Yeah, I'm Bill Bryan, and we're glad you're on WKYT this morning. It is your Friday, November 4th, and we're glad you're with us today. And a big weekend going on around these parts. Mm -hmm. right? Clearly, I'm excited about the weekend. I've just lost all control. Uh, meteorologist Micah Harris is here now with that beautiful weekend forecast, right? Yeah, yeah, right. And you know, I laugh about that sometimes, what you just said. But people are like, dude, you're from Alabama. You can't make fun of me at all, all right? So, outside right now, here's your look. Defender Radar Network, the rain has moved. Move through. It's long gone, and what we're going to be seeing in the next few days, we're going to be dry. Everybody will be dry. Everybody will have sunny skies, but it will be much cooler. There's a different feel in the air, so keep that in mind as you're walking out the door this morning. We're in the 40s and 50s. That's a cool start. It's not definitely cold or anything like that, uh, but it is on the cooler side of things. And trust me, this afternoon you may need that coat because we're going to have those winds. Not only that, but temperatures upper 50s, lower 60s, which is roughly average. But you got to remember, we've been in the 80s, the 70s the past couple of weeks. So it's going to feel much, much cooler. We're going to have that. I'll show you your weekend forecast. It looks pretty good. That's coming up. And in the news right now, Kentucky is under a statewide emergency right now, and dry conditions are not helping the crews out any. Wildfires continue to spread in parts of the state. Our Michelle Chamberlain is at the WKYT Alert Desk this morning with the details. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning. With so many fires burning, the Kentucky Emergency Operations Center is activated this morning. There are several fires burning across eastern Kentucky. You can see smoke. And ash as you drive down the highway in Harlan County. Forestry crews are trying to knock out a 1,500 acre fire in the county near the Letcher County line. Some schools have been canceled, and the fires are getting extremely close to homes. The National Guard deployed choppers carrying 600 gallon buckets to drop water on the fires from the air. They say more than 6,000 acres have burned since it all began. At this point, some people aren't sure when the fires will go out, and they're worried about their homes. Last night, we sat up all night watching it, and this morning it was around my house. Whenever the wind picks up, you just can't do anything with it. All you see is just flames and smoke. Just terrible. And as of right now, 14 Kentucky counties are under a burn ban. A state employee says this is the first time wildfires have caused a state of emergency since 2001. Andrea, Bill. Okay, difficult situation there and quite a challenge. Mm -hmm. And in Whitley County, firefighters think some fires that burned earlier this week were set on purpose. The largest was on Tackett Creek Road south of Williamsburg. Kentucky forestry leaders say that the fire there is now mostly out. People who live nearby say they can't understand why someone would want to start fires with conditions being so dry. I live here and it, it's a wonder, and I've got, as you can tell, I got a. 18 months old and a five year old. I mean, yeah. they could have been out here. At this point, investigators are not sure who set the fires. Firefighters in Whitley County say no property was damaged. 14 Kentucky counties have now issued outdoor burn bans. You can find that list right now on WKYT.com. You can also keep up with the latest information on these wildfires on your smartphone by using the WKYT News app. We're learning new details this morning about a woman accused of hitting and killing two people with her car. Suzanne Whitlow was booked into the Fayette County Detention Center yesterday, but jail officials say she was taken back to the hospital. WKYT's Lauren Miner is live with the new details this morning. Good morning, Lauren. Good morning, Bill. In this arrest citation, we are learning more details about, about the night police say uh, Suzanne Whitlow hit and killed two, uh, two men on South Upper Street. In the citation, it states that Whitlow admitted to drinking multiple vodka and cranberries before the accident on Saturday. It also says that Whitlow drove up onto the sidewalk and hit the two men. Whitlow had been in the hospital since early Saturday morning when police say she hit and killed UK employee Timothy Moore and Louisville detective Jason Swipes. 
officer on South Upper Street. A jail spokesperson says Whitlow was booked into the Fayette County Jail yesterday around 4 p.m., but then taken back to the hospital for more medical care. She is still considered, though, an inmate while in the hospital. Lexington police have charged Whitlow with two counts of manslaughter and DUI. And even though Whitlow was taken back to the hospital yesterday, she is scheduled to appear here in district court later on this afternoon. Reporting live in Lexington, Lauren Miner, WKYT. And today marks one year since Richmond police officer Daniel Ellis was shot in the line of duty. Ellis's call for help came in at 10:36 in the morning on November 4th of last year. This morning, at that time, there will be a moment of silence held in front of the Richmond Police Department to honor Officer Ellis. In the last year, Ellis's wife Katie has been determined to keep up her husband's legacy through the Daniel Ellis Foundation. We've helped uh, families who have lost their homes to fire. Um, we've helped community members who have a hard time paying medical bills. On Sunday, there will be a flag football game, the sixth annual Turkey Bowl between Richmond officers and firefighters. And Ellis's son, uh, Like, is going to be a part of that event. Uh, you can find out how you can get involved in that game and get details on how to donate to the Daniel Ellis Foundation. We have that available for you right now at WKYT.com. Lexington police say a suspect now admits to robbing a pharmacy. Police say Christopher Sullivan went up to the Rite Aid in the Palomar Center last night. They say he pulled out a BB gun and demanded pills. After stealing some drugs, police say Sullivan ran off. Officers found him short time later and arrested him. According to his arrest citation, Sullivan also showed police where the pills and BB gun were. He is charged with robbery. A Clark County judge sentenced three men for their roles in a deadly shooting at an apartment complex. Christopher Robinson received 30 years in prison for murder, burglary, and assault. Lamont Wilkerson received 27 years for complicity charges. And Aaron Staley received 25 years for complicity. In 2014, police say the three men were robbing people in an apartment when a shot was fired. Police say the shot went through the floor and killed Amber Cottle, who was in a neighboring apartment. Cottle's mother spoke about her during the sentencing. She was so sweet and so loving and intelligent and so outgoing. The case against a fourth suspect, Lillian Barnett, is still pending. Her next hearing is in January. Kentucky State Police have arrested a Perry County man after a standoff. Police say they got a Wednesday night that Joshua Neese was firing shots in the Bonnie Man community. When police arrived at his home on Greenbrier Court, they say he refused to come outside. They say Neese made threats and even shot fires at the officers. No one was hurt. Around 3 yesterday morning, police say they arrested Neese after firing tear gas into his home. He's been charged with attempted murder. People can now pay tribute to boxing legend Muhammad Ali in Louisville. Ali's gravesite at Cave Hill Cemetery is now open to the public. Ali picked the location and specific plot back in 2008. He wanted an area of landscaping with color, and to make it welcoming to the public, he wanted two granite benches for visitors. Many have already stopped by the site, including Ali's brother. It's a very high tribute and honor to do this for my brother. He's in heaven now, and he's such a good person in life, and he deserves it. Ali's granite monument bears his name and his quote, service to others is the rent you pay for your room in heaven. Remarkable uh, family resemblance. Oh, I know. Brother there, right? yeah. yeah. Well, the 2018 World Equestrian Games have found a new home, and it's not going to be here in Kentucky. That's all right. The International Equestrian Federation awarded the event to the Tryon International Equestrian Center near Asheville, North Carolina. The event was originally awarded to a town in Quebec, but that site later withdrew for financial reasons. The Kentucky Horse Park hosted the games in 2010. The state thought about putting in a bid for 2018, but decided to focus on trying to land the games in. 2022 instead. Probably also for financial reasons. Right. <laughs> it's expensive. Yeah, and, and you want to do it right. And uh, certainly exactly. uh, waiting until uh, 2022 would give them uh, more time to get to everything in order. And uh, mm -hmm. it was a big deal in 2010 around oh, yeah. here. WKYT this morning is just getting started. It is 5.09 right now. And still ahead on WKYT, if you've got a lot of questions, Google just might have all of the answers. Find out what new gadget they're coming out with in about 10 minutes. Also ahead on WKYT this morning, the Cubs get a special congratulatory phone call from a big White Sox fan. That story coming up after Micah's forecast.
It's a bit cool in the air right now, but as we head towards your weekend, it actually gets a little bit better. We're going to show you a great looking forecast coming up next. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. We get on Defender Radar Network. I wanted to show you this early this morning, let you know the rain's long gone, so you don't have to worry about that as you're walking out the door early this morning. But one thing you will have to worry about is a little cool. It's on the cool side of things is uh, you head out the front door, heading out to your car. Maybe a sweater, maybe a light coat, especially central and northern zones. Is now we're dipping into the 40s for many locations, especially Moorhead, and then go back to where Carlisle, Flemingsburg, Sharpsburg, all the way to Mays, uh, Maysville in Mason County, Double A Highway. If you're up toward that area and about to get in your car and travel that, just know it's on the cooler side of things. Down south, not all that bad, still in the mid 50s. And it looks like as we travel towards your afternoon, we'll be there in the lower 60s for the most part. Uh, some of us could end up up north, maybe 58, 59 degrees, but for the most part, we'll be there in the low 60s. A lot of sunshine, looking good, feeling good, heading off toward your 8 p.m. hour, and that is when you may need that coat, maybe a, maybe a nice little blanket there to start off those high school football games. Because once you finish, once you're about to head off into the fourth quarter, then you're talking about temperatures there in the upper 40s. It will be chilly later on this evening, and a nice breeze out of the uh, north and northwest, 5 to 15 miles per hour. That will actually make it feel much cooler today, too. 62 degrees there on your Saturday. Remember, Saturday morning, we're waking up mid to upper 30s. It's going to be a chilly start Saturday morning. Could be some patchy frost. Got to be watching out for that. So just keep in mind, if you're in one of those spots that are typically cold, Typically, some of the valley areas, you will be at least the better opportunity for uh, seeing some patchy frost. Off towards your Sunday, we're at 65 degrees. That's just above average. The weekend looks phenomenal. Let's check out your Twitter pick of the day, Micah Harris WX. You can find me there on Twitter. How cool is this shot? Really, really good looking shot out of Lee County. This is from at Kentucky Girl underscore UK. Great, great shot. One of the, my favorite fall shots in Lee County. So really, really neat looking shot. I tell you this though, it's, it's been making me a little sad just driving through these neighborhoods, driving around town and seeing these leaves already falling and, and they really didn't change that much. And, and when they did change, they fell pretty quickly. So it just wasn't it wasn't a good fall foliage, you, you know, this foliage. Week, right, they just, they just turned brown. Yes, this week, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. It, was, uh, it was not too good this year. But you know what? It's all right. Still, the weather is okay, yeah. and it looks like the next seven days, I don't see any problems whatsoever. Some good spots like that in Lee That's County. Right. Beautiful, there you wasn't there it? You go. Thank you, Micah. 5.15 our time this morning. And Chicago Cubs manager Joe Madden got a congratulatory phone call from President Obama himself. Now, the president is a well-known White Sox fan, but his deputy chief of staff, Anita Decker Breckenridge, Roots for the Cubbies. And she got to listen in on the call as the president chatted up the club's manager from Air Force One. President Obama made the call after Wednesday night's exciting World Series victory, the first for the Chicago Cubs since 1908. Pretty cool. So. <laughs> Not many people get a call from Air Force One. Right. <laughs> and long before there was an Air Force One, uh, the last time the Cubs would have been uh, playing would have been Teddy Roosevelt, would have been the oh president. Oh, my gosh. Does that not put things in perspective, people? <laughs> right. It's been a while. There you go. <laughs> William Howard Taft was elected the next Shoot. month, by the way. A little trivia. Too much You're trivia good. for Friday morning. Right? I know. <laughs> 516 The Time, WKYT This Morning is on the air live from Lexington with the latest. And when we come back, we'll take a look at your money. Long-term mortgage rates are rising, and Google wants to speak to you in your living room. Those stories and more coming up in your CBS Money Watch report. Kentucky mornings start here. You're watching WKYT This Morning. Good morning. Ooh. Welcome back into WKYT this morning. We're glad you're with us on your Friday. I think that Friday feeling is in the air. Oh my right gosh, here, yes, right? it is. And mortgage rates are taking a jump, but overall, they're still at historic lows. And it looks like Fitbit is slowing down a little bit. So, Roxana Saberi has the latest on your money. Mortgage rates jumped this week to their highest level in four months. Mortgage giant Freddie Mac said on Thursday the average 30-year fixed rate mortgage rose to 3.54 percent. Still, rates remain at historic lows. Some analysts predict rates will continue to rise, especially if the Federal Reserve raises its benchmark rate next month. On Wall Street Thursday, the Dow dropped 28 points. The Nasdaq lost 47. Fitbit is slowing down. The fitness tracker stock sank to a record low on Thursday after a disappointing earnings report. The market for wearable devices is competitive and shaky. The research firm IDC says global sales have been sharply lower than a year earlier.
If you've always wanted someone around to answer your questions throughout the day, Google's new home smart speaker may be for you. It can wake you up in the morning, give you the weather forecast, and control smart home gadgets, all powered by Google Search. The device goes for $129. Google is releasing Home nearly two years after Amazon launched its popular Echo smart speaker. That's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, log on to cbsmoneywatch.com. In New York, I'm Roxana Saberi. Okay, so Nutella no longer wants to be classified as a dessert topping. Instead, the maker <laughs> wants it to change to a spread like jam and honey. It's a bid by Ferrero to lower the serving size on its label in the U.S. Ferrero argues people are no longer using the spread for dessert like they did in the 90s. Instead, it says the majority now use it on toast, so they're using smaller portions. The FDA has not made a decision yet on their request. Well, I had Nutella this morning. I was going to say, whatever you use it. <laughs> and it was, it was on a rice cake. Yeah. So I guess they're kind of right. I think they do have a point about that. Yeah. It, we'll, we'll see what, <laughs> what happens here with the <laughs> Now I can Nutella. just say, it was less calories than it looked okay. like. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Everybody stay uh, tuned on this. Now, we, we'll, yeah. we'll update you on, on yeah. Nutella. It's, <laughs> the big it's, news it today. It goes along. Uh, 522 on WKYT in your Friday morning. And coming up in just a few minutes, all of our top stories. And sports is coming up next. Stay with us. The UK running game has been on point for the last month plus. How are teams now trying to devise ways to stop the Cats? Mark Stoops addresses that. John Calipari appears to be closing in on his first big time recruit from 2017, from the 2017 class, and the UK women in exhibition action last night. The highlights are on the way. We're 48 degrees right now in Mount Sterling. I'm WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris. It's a cool start to the day for most everybody. Central and northern zones. You go down south, it's not all that bad. We're sitting at 55 degrees now in London. We'll feel it, though, as we start to see that sunrise right around 8 a.m. So it is a cool start. A lot of sunshine, though. Trust me on this. As we head throughout the next few days, it looks good, but it's going to feel much cooler. Grab that sweater before you take off. Let's check out sports, see what's going on. Mark Stoops saying late Thursday afternoon it had been a good week of practice. He said his team is excited, ready to go as the Georgia Bulldogs come to Commonwealth Stadium Saturday night. The Kentucky offense has been spearheaded by an impressive running game featuring Boom Williams and Benny Snell. As for opposing defenses, making adjustments to counter the Cats run, Stoops said yesterday there's a lot to look at. And if you're looking at our body of work offensively, there's a lot there. It, it may not seem like it, but there is. Out of that wildcat and all the different looks and the different formations and the motions and just everything, there's a lot there in and, in and of itself in, in the wildcat. And then you look at all the other personnel groupings and formations and what we're doing, there's a lot there. So, um, you know, but it, it really comes down to execution and, and what sides uh, execute better. So it'll be the same way this week. Five-star big man Nick Richards will make his college announcement in six days. He says it's down to three schools, Kentucky, Arizona, and Syracuse. Kentucky believed to be the heavy favorite. Richards out of the New York area. Go 6'11, 235. The UK women hosting their only exhibition game of the preseason last night against Union University. And the Cats begin the season ranked number 19 in the country. First quarter, it was all Kentucky off the Taylor Murray miss. Evelyn Akator with the board and the putback. Cats on the board first. Now, UK in transition early and often. Michaela Epps cross court pass to Murray. This time knocks down the jumper. UK scored the game's first 11 points. The first quarter belonged to Michaela Epps. So did the ball game, really. The preseason All American had the hot hand, hitting a variety of shots from different spots. Four for four behind the arc. 31 in the game for Epps. Kentucky wins it 78 to 60. That is a look at sports tonight. High school football playoffs really get going. We'll have the highlights much later tonight. That is a look at sports. Enjoy your Friday.